Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants, I'm back, guys, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, what's up, y'all, welcome back, guys, welcome back, got another great video for you guys today, as usual, you guys know the deal on this channel, man, it's all about setting the record straight, stopping the lies, stopping the narratives, stopping them from rewriting the history, man, and bending reality, Holding these guys to a standard. And that's what we're going to do on this in this video, guys. We're going to talk about Paul Pierce, man. And just the idiotic statements. The, just the nonsense that these guys say. Once again, talking about the 1992 Dream Team, man. We're going to talk about some of the comments that Paul Pierce made. These guys, they have no respect for the 92 Dream Team. They have no respect for these players. I mean, the way that they talk about these guys. As if they were just also random. They were just... We're going to talk about this video, guys, man. I'm so tired of this stuff, man. It's out of control now, the disrespect for these guys, man. I don't understand where this is coming from and why these guys can't be honest and why they, once again, can't keep their integrity, these guys, man. Once again, not giving you the facts, not educating you guys. We're going to talk about this video, man. And much respect. Shout out to all you guys out there, man. Everyone that's been supporting my channel, everyone across the world, everyone across the states, guys. I am truly, truly humbled. You guys know the deal on this channel. Much respect. Thank you for everybody. Like I said, it's been going to the live streams or coming to the live streams, man, that's been supporting my channel. I am truly humbled, guys. As you guys always know, man, much respect. Thank you to all you guys out there, man. Like I said, the true basketball fans that have been standing up, man. Shout out to everybody in the membership. Thank you, guys. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, we're going to talk about Paul Pierce in this video briefly, man. Because these guys, this guy, I tell you, man, I need to make a segment it's just about NBA players and just say, NBA players, please shut up. Just shut the hell up. You guys, once again, it, stop talking about stuff that you don't know anything about. Apparently, Paul Pierce knows nothing about the 1992 Dream Team, the players on the 1992 Dream Team, what they could do, you know, their skills, none of this stuff. He don't know anything about these guys, apparently. No, no matter how great those guys were, he still doesn't seem to understand these guys at all or know their games. None of this stuff. Because I listened to this guy talk on Undisputed. I heard a clip from Paul Pierce on Undisputed. Once again, these guys have this platform. They have the cachet because they play in the league. But what have I told you guys? Just because you play in the NBA does not mean that you know the history of the NBA or that you're even respecting or respect the history of the NBA. And once again, Paul Pierce exposed himself as either not knowing the history of the NBA, not knowing the guys on the Dream Team, or once again, guys, like I tell you, not educating you, not being honest with you, not keeping the integrity and not respecting these guys, man. And he came out here and, and it was saying, and the question was, who are you taking, this current Olympic team or the 92 Dream Team? And Paul Pierce, he said that this team would dominate, dominate. Those are exact words he used. Dominate the 92 Dream Team, guys. Not that he believes this team is better or that they would beat this uh, the 92 team. He said they would dominate them. And the reasons he gave for, for why they would dominate made no sense. Once again, these guys don't seem to, uh, like I said, they play in the league, but don't seem to get it. He started talking about Larry Bird was the first thing he said. Oh, Larry Bird is old. Larry Bird was old and washed up. That was, I think that was a word he used about Larry Bird. That's the first thing these guys want to go to now is they want to bring down Larry Bird and the greatness of Larry Bird, even in 1992. Yes, Larry Bird physically may have been beaten and broken down, Absolutely. But when we talk about Larry Bro on the basketball court and his effectiveness and things that he could do, his IQ, once again, his shooting ability. This is what I'm talking about. Larry Bird's game was never predicated on his athleticism. It was based off the fundamentals of skills. That did not deteriorate with age. Yeah, he wasn't as quick. He couldn't run as fast or jump as high as he could when he first came in when he was physically strong, when he didn't have those ailments. But Larry Bird out there on the court was effective. Why? Because he could still shoot the basketball. So if he was open, he was making the shot. In this kind of style of, of play style, leave Larry Bird open. He's money. Money. He's a dri driving kick out to Larry Bird all day. He's knocking it down. But once again, it was his veteran savvy, the IQ of Larry Bird, his passing ability, all these things that made Larry Bird effective. So please, let's stop disrespecting Larry Bird because of the age of Larry Bird in 1992. We need to stop all this nonsense. Once again, Paul Pierce, what the hell are you talking about? Larry Bird can still get it done, man. He was still a very good player, man. Just, yeah, he wasn't prime Larry Bird, but still excellent. So right there, he made no sense. Once again, trying to tear down Larry Bird by saying he was beat up and old and all this stuff, making no sense. Larry Bird can still do his thing out there. Once again, give me Larry Bird. 
And then he started talking about, he tried to say Magic Johnson was old too. Oh, Magic Johnson was washed up. Magic Johnson was coming off of back-to-back -back MVPs who was runner-up in 1991, who came back for the All-Star Game in 1992, which a lot of people forget, came back, was voted into the All-Star Game in 1992 and put on a show in one of the great performances in NBA All-Star Game history, guys. My, my favorite All-Star Game of all time uh, was 1992 and watching Magic put on that show, man. And once again, Magic Johnson was still a primetime performer and he was still uh, playing at a high level. We talked about that Barcelona um, uh, that the practice that they had out there in Monte Carlo, right? And he talked about it was Michael Jordan's team versus Magic Johnson's team and the competitive fire and the way that Magic Johnson played. So don't talk, I, come out here, Paul Pierce started talking about Magic Johnson was washed up. Magic Johnson was old. Like, stop the nonsense, man. They need to stop this. I don't want to hear about HIV. I don't want to hear about none of this stuff. Magic Johnson was still balling, man. And then he started talking about who's guarding this guy, who's guarding that guy, who the hell on this Olympic team is guarding anybody? Now, let's think about defense, man, because he started talking some nonsense about the big men. And we're going to get into that because the disrespect towards Patrick Ewing and David Robinson is out of control right now, especially towards Patrick Ewing. The disrespect about, uh, towards Patrick Ewing is ridiculous. Some of the things I've heard some of these fools like Colin Cowherd say and Nick Wright say about Patrick Ewing versus some of the big men on this current Olympic team. But he started talking about who's guarding LeBron James, who guarded Kevin Durant, blah, 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 blah. Who the hell's guarding Michael Jordan? Who the hell is guarding Michael Jordan? No one's guarding Michael Jordan. And once again, when we talk about the defensive guys, let's think about the defensive players on both of these teams. And let's think about the top defensive players. If we went down a list on both teams, it was like, who are the best defensive players on both teams? You're going to be talking about the guys on the 92 team. You're going to be talking about Michael Jordan. You're going to be talking about Scottie Pippen. You're going to be talking about David Robinson. You're going to be talking about Patrick Ewing. You're going to be talking about Carl Malone. The, this Olympic team, they got Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, who was a, a very good defensive player. But come on, man. Let's be real here. Anthony Davis is frail. He's soft. He's sensitive. He ain't going to be able to bang with them guys down low. He ain't banging with David Robinson and Patrick Ewing down low. Stop it right now. Bam Adebayo is one of their top defensive guys Paul Pierce talking about. Bam and a bow. No disrespect to him, but he's not on a level Patrick Ewing or David Robinson as far as big men and their defensive prowess. He ain't on that level, man. No way, no how. So let's get that right there off the jump. Who are the best defensive? Drew Holiday? Solid defensive guy, no doubt. He's not on the level of Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, guys, perimeterly defensively on the perimeter. He's not on that level. He's a very good defensive player. He ain't on Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan's level, though, guys. So who are the top defensive players for the Olympic team right now? Versus the 92 team. All the top defensive guys go to the 92 team. We talk about Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, David Robinson, Patrick Ewing. To me, they're the best defensive players on both teams. They're the top four guys. To me, those are the guys. So when we talk about defense and Paul Pierce, about who's guarding Kevin Durant, who's guarding LeBron James, guarding LeBron James, what, what moves are we guarding against here? I'll put Carl Malone on LeBron James. What's he going to do? He ain't going to bang into Carl Malone. He ain't going to bang Carl Malone or back him down. He ain't got no post game. He's going to do that off-arm move and lower the shoulder to Carl Malone. No, it's not going to happen. And once again, I have David Robinson or Patrick Ewan behind Carl Malone. What's LeBron James going to do? No one's worried about LeBron James. Once again, on the perimeter. I put Scottie Pippen on LeBron James. I put Scottie Pippen on Kevin Durant. I put Michael Jordan on Kevin Durant. I put Michael Jordan on LeBron James. Are you kidding me right now? They can't dribble the ball against those guys. They'd be ripping Kevin Durant all day if he tried to dribble the ball. Kevin Durant would just have to get the ball and shoot it quickly. He can't dribble the ball around those guys. Get out of here, man. Steph Curry? Where's he going to go? I'm so tired of the disrespect. Paul Pierce, they would dominate the 92 team. Dominate how? Based over what? Then he started talking about the, the 92 uh, team couldn't shoot threes. They couldn't shoot? They couldn't shoot Paul Pierce? Let's think about this once again now. Let's think about the players from both teams, the shooters. Who do we have on both teams? We have Larry Bird, knocked down money. They got Steph Curry, knocked down, right? Who else do you got? You got Michael Jordan, money all day. They got Kevin Durant. You got John Stockton, knocking down jumpers all day. We got Devin Booker. Who are the knockdown shooters? You got Chris Mullen, knocking down jump shots all day long out there. He's money. When we talk about the big men shooting the shots, 
Who got a better jump shot than Patrick Ewing? Shooting the ball. So when we talk about shooting the basketball, just shooting. The 92 Dream Team was balanced. They had guys that could shoot. Carl Malone they ain't got a perimeter jump shot. David Robinson ain't have a perimeter jump shot. Dave Robinson with the lefty stroke. Patrick Ewing, one of the smoothest jump shots for a big man in the history of the NBA. One of the best big shooting big men from the mid-range. What are we talking about here? He's a better shooter than Bam and Abayo. And we can talk about Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid, once again, the big men for this dream team or for this Olympic team. Anthony Davis and Joel Embiid, those are your top big men. They're both frail. They're both sensitive. You can't rely on these guys. Joel Embiid going against David Robinson or Patrick Ewing, it wouldn't go too well. Joel Embiid in this era, he looks good in this era. Put Joel Embiid in the 90s when he's got to bang against Patrick Ewing and he's got to go against Hakeem Olajuwon and David Robinson and Alonzo Mourning and Shaquille O'Neal and Dikembe Mutombo and Manute Ball and Mark Eaton and an old Malone, Moses Malone, Robert Parrish, Rick Smith. He's got to go and bang against these guys night in and night out. He ain't going to, how's he going to hold up against those guys? He ain't win no MVP in the 90s. The hell out of here, Joel Embiid, Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo. They can't, they can't hold, they can't hold up to Patrick Ewing and David Robinson, Charles Barkley, Carl Malone. No way, man. Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry. They ain't got nothing from Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Clyde Drexler, Chris Mullen, John Stockton, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. They ain't got nothing for them dudes, man. The 92 Dream Team had it all. Guys that could shoot, guys that could hit, hit big-time baskets, right where they were clutch-time performers, guys that were proven. Who's the clutch guys for this, for this Olympic team? If the game gets tight, who's, who are you going to? When Paul Pierce says, oh, they would dominate. How are they going to dominate the 92 Dream Team? In the clutch, who are you going to? Steph Curry? Is he the most clutch player on that team? Who are you going to? Kevin Durant? LeBron James? The 92 team had guys like Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. Some of the most clutch time performers in the history of the game. Once again, this is what I'm talking about with Larry Bird. The IQ, the clutch play of Larry Bird. He ain't out there stumbling and bumbling, making mistakes. No matter how old it hurt he was. He wasn't a liability out there. They weren't worse because of Larry Bird. They didn't win despite Larry Bird. He was an asset to the team, Larry Bird. People keep trying to make it seem like Larry Bird was a weak link or something. There was no weak link. If anything, it was Christian Leitner. And we know why he was on the team. They didn't stop disrespecting Larry Bird of 92, man. And stop playing these games. There's a reason why he was on the team. Once again, he was not a liability for the 92 Dream Team. Once again, they did not win despite Larry Bird. He was an asset to the team. He helped them. They were greater with Larry Bird. That's the greatest of Larry Bird. These other goofs out here, they can't do what Larry Bird did at that age, dealing with that, those kind of physical uh, uh, de uh, de uh, <laughs> debilitations. You know what I'm saying? Larry Bird was out there saying, showing the grit in the heart of a champion out there earning it. These guys are missing games already. Sitting out uh, exhibitions. These guys have been proven to be frail. And Paul Pierce talking about Larry Bird. They tried to disrespect Magic Johnson. Once again, these guys talk so down on these guys. These are all-time great players. And they, they, they talk about Patrick Ewing and David Robinson like they're nobodies. Like the big men from this team are better. Anthony Davis, Joel Embiid, and Bam Adebayo, the big men for this team, they can't shine the shoes of David Robinson and Patrick Ewing, guys. Carl Malone, Charles Barkley. You start putting, like I said, the big men of the 92 team versus these guys. The way that I heard Colin Cowherd talk about Patrick Ewing the other day is ridiculous. I mean, he just dismissed Patrick Ewing like he was nobody. Oh, Anthony Davis is greater than Patrick Ewing. No, he's not. How is Anthony Davis greater than Patrick Ewing? He may have had the potential to be greater than Patrick Ewing, but what has he actually done that's greater than Patrick Ewing? Patrick Ewing, in 1990, I averaged four blocks a game. Four blocks a game in 1990. Anthony Davis had never sniffed four blocks a game in a season. 
And Patrick Ewing didn't even win the, the blocking title that season, guys. Hakeem Olajuwon won the blocks title at 4.6 in 1990. Patrick Ewing had four blocks a game that season, but didn't win a block title. You know who finished after him? David Robinson with 3.9 blocks a game. These are the guys that Patrick Ewing was going against night in and night out, year in and year out during his peak when he was at his best. He was going against some of the greatest defensive big men and some of the greatest big men overall in the history of the game. When you're talking about the Shaquille O'Neal, the David Robinson, the Hakeem Olajuwon, the Alonzo Mornings, the Rick Smiths, the Robert Parrishes, right? He's going against these guys, night in and night out. Night in and night out. So when people talk about Patrick Ewing, they want to try to make it seem like he never won an MVP or he didn't make that many all-defensive teams or he wasn't on that, that many all-NBA teams or, or some things of that nature. He never won a defensive play the year award. Yeah, no duh. Because the man was going against some of the greatest centers in the history of the game. The history of the game. Some of the greatest defensive centers in the history of the game. That was his competition. That's not Joel Embiid's competition. That's not Bam and Biles competition or Anthony Davis competition. None of these fools. But Colin Cowherd and Paul Pierce want to talk about Patrick Ewing and some of the big men, like, dismiss these guys. Once again, Patrick Ewing, I believe, finished top five in MVP voting like six or seven times his career. Once again, finishing behind guys like Michael Jordan, Carl Malone, Charles Barkley, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Hakeem Olajuwon. Some of the greatest players in the history of the game. At his position. And then David Robinson, once again, the disrespect towards David Robinson and his overall game is insane. Paul Pierce should know better. David Robinson, man, we talk about at his peak. At his peak, man, what he could do on both sides of the ball. Remember, David Robinson scored 71 points in a game once. He was an excellent rebounder. An excellent shot blocker, could get steals, had great recovery time, great athleticism from David Robinson, could run the floor like a deer, could get out there on the break. David Robinson, I mean, my goodness, Joel Embiid can't touch David Robinson. <laughs> I'm telling you guys right now, Joel Embiid is a big dude, man, and he's got some skills, some quote-unquote skills at that center position. But people need to stop acting like Joel Embiid's going against people out here. He looks all pretty out here in this soft era of NBA that he's playing in with no other great legit centers. It's who, him and Nikola Jokic? Carl Anthony Towns? I'm supposed to be impressed with these guys? There's no legit big men. Put Patrick Ewing in this era. He dominated Joel Embiid. So would David Robinson. And these guys are more durable and they're tougher than the Anthony Davises, the Bam Adebayos. And once again, when you talk about these perimeter guys, the Jason Tatum, the Devin Bookers, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, a lot of these guys are frail. They're sensitive. They're not the clutch time performers of a Magic, a Larry, Larry Bird, a Michael Jordan. They're not on these guys' level. They don't play the defense like a Scottie Pippen, a Michael Jordan, a Carl Malone, a David Robinson, a Patrick Ewing. They're not the defensive players of these guys. John Stockton playing better defense than a Steph Curry would or a Devin Booker or a Tyrese Halliburton. Once again, they have shooters when you talk about uh, Chris Mullen. Like I said, the John Stocktons, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird. These guys are knockdown shooters. Knockdown shooters. You had the, the athletes. You talk about Clyde Drexler, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen getting out in the break with Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird feeding them, David Robinson. These guys were at their peaks, man. Charles Barkley was going into an MVP season. Clyde Drexler was the runner-up to the MVP in 92. Michael Jordan was fresh off of back-to-back -back titles, going for his third. Like I said, Magic Johnson was best fresh off of a 1991 Finals appearance after being runner-up to the MVP and then playing the All-Star game and won the All-Star game MVP in 1992. David Robinson was still at his peak. Patrick Ewing was at his peak. Right, the, the New York Knicks would go and match up with the Bulls in the Eastern Conference Finals that next season, win 60-plus games. John Stockton, Carl Malone were at their peaks. Clyde Drex, like I said, was coming off of his best season ever in 1992 as runner-up of the MVP. All these guys were playing at a high level. Scottie Pippen was at his best in 92, 93, 91. Like, this is where Scottie Pippen was at his best on both sides. Athletic peak. All these guys, Michael Jordan, and Paul Pierce would talk about the 92 Dream Team. Like, these guys, 
They, they, they talk about Larry Bird. He's old. And he, the whole team was old. It don't make any sense. These guys, when they, when, they, when they make their breakdown of why this team are dominant, it don't add up. He didn't say anything that was accurate. Nothing that was educational. Nothing that was factual. Nothing that would you be like, oh, yeah, you know what? He's, he's right about that. No. They couldn't shoot the 92 Dream Team. They couldn't shoot threes. What? Ain't no one worried about Devin Booker or Jason Tatum or Ty. Yeah, they got Steph Curry, KD. Those guys would knock some jumpers down. But once again, 92 had shooters. They're trying to make it seem like these guys couldn't play the game. They had better fundamentals in 92. They were harder. They were tougher. They had more grit. They were bigger. They were stronger. My goodness, man. I'm so tired of this crap with these fools. But they play in the league. So everybody want to listen to them. These guys got a platform. They would dominate the 92. See, I can't believe you say they would dominate. Once again, the disrespect for the 92 Dream Team is out of control right now. It's gone out of control. Once again, in order for them to promote this team, they have to tear down the 92 team. Why are we doing this once again? That's why we're here to set the record straight. They have to tear down the 92 team. They can't give the 92 team their props and be like, yeah, you know, it would be a matchup, but I'll take this team. Okay. Fine, don't say they would dominate them. Stop it. And then the reasons you give don't add up. The big men on 92 Dream Team were greater than the big men on this team. Hands down, it's not even a question. Hands down. And the best player on the court would always be Michael Jordan. So it wouldn't matter. All the clutch type performers are on the 92 team. The best defensive players are on the 92 team. The best leaders are on the 92 team. Who the hell's a leader on this team? LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, they're not leaders, man. They're great players. They're not leaders. They're not great leaders. They're not leaders like a Larry Bird, a Magic Johnson, a Michael Jordan, a John Stockton. They were leaders, man. Patrick Ewing leading the New York Knicks all those years. David Robinson leading the Spurs all those years. Get out of here, man. Chuck didn't even call timeout with these guys. Didn't even call timeout. Because they had true leadership. And once again, they had high IQs. They didn't have to worry about, yeah, you know, we've only been playing for a couple of weeks. So, you know, they weren't lollygagging out there. They were true professionals, those guys. True pros. Pros, pros. Right? Man's man. That's who those guys were. They showed up. And for Paul Pierce to talk that nonsense about the 92 team, that they would get dominated, it's an absolute joke. Once again, these guys need to shut the hell up. They're embarrassing themselves with these takes out here. Where's your integrity at? Team is struggling against South Sudan, but he wants to tell, tell us that they would dominate the 92 Dream Team. And then he gives you a bunch of asinine reasons why. He didn't break the game down at all. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.